Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Half Ass Sportscast. I'm your host, Ryan Faulkner, and alongside my co host, Mark, and the big cheese of Visco for Dante. Hello, how you doing? <laughs> Hi, oh. That's your fan, everybody. <laughs> hey, oh. Hey, oh. All right, so, welcome to the show. Um, it's a little somber mood today. As if you'd, uh, you've already known, we didn't have a show last week. We were going to have it on Wednesday. That fell on a game day, then, uh, which didn't happen, actually, because it got rained out. Then we were going to try to do it on Friday, which the outcome would already be known. But it turns out there was a game that night. And that night, Mark, the Rangers, unfortunately, lost yep. the Yeah. Ryan, I'm just uh, glad Mark's not doing this show solo tonight. I really yeah. thought we'd turn on the camera and there'd be a suicide note. Glad to yeah. see you, uh, you were able to make it. I'd be, uh, I was under one crime light with a, playing Russian roulette with a bottle of uh, whiskey. Just hey, to, Rich, uh, I did wait to call him after a couple of days, though, because I knew I either wouldn't get a response or it would just be a... Not, a litany not a of swear good. words coming out the phone. A giant F-bomb whenever he picks up the phone that just carries for like 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah, it could have been. Uh... <laughs> I didn't it, was, it was pretty bad because my day job was uh, we were going to have like a big uh, kind of like employee general session get together. And they're like, let's make the whole theme like Rangers. World, we're going to be world champions. What we do, everything's going to be Rangers. And like the next two games, they lost it all. And then we came back for the next meeting. The next week, we're kind of like, OK, let's let's not do let's not do any of that. Just throw everything out. <laughs> we, we can't use any of this. Especially after that, that game six there. Yeah. Oh, man. That game six. I guess we could start there. Do you want to start there or do you want to start from the beginning? No. Let's go game six. Everybody knows by now, but let's just put our finishing touches on that. But Okay. Uh, really, I mean, that's got to be uh, – for me, the 06 finals and the Mavericks losing to the Heat the way they did – um, almost closing out game three to go up three nothing. Um, that that was that, that was pretty bad. That hurt a lot, and it hurt for subsequent years because they had always put good efforts and they just seemed to falter. And then they stopped putting up good efforts and they just always seemed to falter and it got worse and worse. But uh, but this is a little bit different. This is I think this is probably worse after thinking about it. Being down, being a one strike away twice. That's like the Mavericks being a free throw away from putting the game away in, in a game six and not being able to do it twice. I don't know what the circumstances would be, but so wait a minute. Let me interrupt you right there. Is this worse than the Mavs collapse against the Heat? That's what I was just said. <laughs> I mean, is that what you're real? No, no. Is that what you're saying? This is a lot it worse. I think this has to be worse. Now, a lot. Why? They were in the series. Mavs were, were up 2-0. They blew four straight. They were, but I think it was worse. And in the grand scheme of things is, A, you had two chances to close it out. You had Josh Hamilton's miracle home run in the 10th in the, uh, the inning. I mean, the guy hasn't hit a home run since in, in two months. He hadn't hit a home run all playoffs. And then the one time he saves it was the potentially game-winning home run in the World Series to win it. And well, I really think uh, Josh Hamilton is here. I really do. Because I don't think he has that series. I think he's a lot more productive if he doesn't have this. I, I think I read an undisclosed injury. No, he is growing, dude. You could tell it was obvious. He wasn't getting any rotation on the bottom of his body. All it was was just him swinging his waist and his arms. No hits. Yeah, and no hits. it's too bad. Yep. It is too bad. The guy deserves that. I'm not oh. going to say everyone's entitled, but it, it would be a nice add-on to his story. One of the best hitters in the game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's too he's bad. He's come through at clutch times, and uh, especially in the series. He hadn't hit the long ball, but he's hit very timely uh, timely hits. But um, just I don't think that – I think it's worse because I, – I think it's worse part than the second part besides – the, the, the Game 6 potential heroics by Josh. and But I think it's worse than that. Honestly, I thought that Game 7 was an afterthought. I didn't think that there was any way in my sports mind and what I've 
developed as a, a sports eye, a sports ear. My sports senses were telling me that there was no way the Rangers were going to win Game 7. As a no. team, you don't come back from something like that. No. And uh, and when they yeah. jumped out 2 nothing in the first, I went, oh, my God, what, what what are we seeing here? And then and then that was it. <laughs> Two runs the first inning, and then they didn't score another one after that. So. Well, that was it, and they could have played out the up for some more. And they they had the chance, and they didn't. They left the long side. Well, he had a heck of a heck of a postseason for them. Really, really good stuff from their ace there at 36 years old. Is I he didn't 36? think. Yeah, yeah, he's he's getting up there in age, and I didn't think he had that game seven in him. Really, I thought it was almost a mistake because whatever momentum they had going into game seven from six would be all taken away because Carpenter was going on short rest, and I didn't know how he was gonna how he was gonna pitch under that kind of pressure on top of it with the short rest. But he proved me wrong. When I was watching that game, I said, wow, he's, he's, really, he's really on it. He's really got his good stuff this whole series, let alone that night. And, uh, and it paid off for them. Um, well, another you know, their thing bullpen, is- too. Their bullpen was, sorry, I just want to say this real quick. Their bullpen uh, throughout the year was kind of their, uh, their problem. And uh, in the postseason, um, you know, Phillies, Brewers, and then Rangers, they just completely turned it around. And that's some of the best um, lineups, you know, that this uh, league has to offer. So their bullpen coming up and stepping up the way that they did. And I think the Rangers not stepping up with their bullpen like we all thought that they could in certain parts was And was they kind did. Of, they, they did in the Detroit series, and they just couldn't pull that through. Yeah, yeah. It kind of went away when they got into the, into the World Series. So I don't know. That's, that's another thing that... Um, wasn't uh, wasn't very helpful. That, that rain out day, looking back on it, Mark, it was pretty big because that allowed Carpenter to come in with a little bit more confidence. Yeah, yeah, it was. It uh, a lot of rain this whole postseason um, with the Detroit series in Texas, and then a little bit with St. Louis, and and it was just a lot of a lot, a lot of weather. Whoop! I think Whoa. we're all good here. A lot of weather no delays. I was going to say, no. speaking of rain, it just started pouring on us here at Master Control, so. Uh... <laughs> Oh. It goes dark all of a sudden. You guys just carry on. We'll just carry on. We'll just do what we normally do. Yes. Just half-ass it. <laughs> oh. oh. Where's that boom boom? Oh, Rich, come on, shot. Rich. If I run that, my computer's going to crash. Yeah. <laughs> the hamster's going to But uh, anyways, um, one other thing, and I know we're getting a little sidetracked, but I do okay. want to touch on C.J. Wilson and what what the heck happened to him. Hey, it's funny you found that when you said Good time. CJ yeah. in the postseason, Rich. <laughs> oh! Yeah, it was, it was uh, <laughs> quite the laughing matter. Dude, it was a... Uh, uh. You know what? I was, I was hearing something today that, you know, CJ, there, there's news uh, uh, in the league that, you know, CJ might be overvalued because of... Yeah. His, his offense that was behind him and his defense, some of the best. Well, that bullpen, all year, that bullpen's been great. The bullpen's been good, the defense, the offense, and the fact that they play weak competition uh, in this division with only four opponents uh, or four teams in it, three other opponents, and all three of them, I mean, the Angels were there for a while. And towards the end of the season, they got neck to neck, but as opposed to, you know, you playing them, how, you know, how often they play them, and the Seattle and the A's, you know, it's considered one of the weaker divisions to compete in, and uh, the, 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 the national media or national perceptions noticing the fact that he might be overvalued, which I think he's going to be. Um, I think that just listening to this guy talk and hearing interviews with him, he is not afraid to tell you how awesome he is and how awesome his <laughs> life he lives. It's, it's really kind of outstanding. So you already know that he's going to he's gonna be buying into the hype. He's going to be listening to everybody. And you know what, Mark, as they say, it only takes one team to be interested, and then, you know, it, they're off and running. And this thing's going to escalate, and he's going to be wanting uh, 100-plus, I think. And whether he can get to 100, it's debatable. Who's whether the team who's going to first offer him 100, 100 million to, to come join them? Yankees. The um, Yankees, you think they're going to go after Wilson? It could well, they they, they they might they might pursue him, but CC's already said that he's he doesn't uh, 
he wants to stay in New York, which he's a free. No, he is. They have just gave him another thirty million. Okay, so he's uh, it's official. He's he's staying. He's, he's locked up. So I don't think the Yankees are interested. Um, you know, the Red Sox they could use a great left-handed arm to uh, add to that starting rotation, but you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of curious to see. Well, um, yeah. It'll be it'll be very interesting to see, and it'll also you know. be interesting to see what he's, he he thinks he's valued at, and what he thinks he can get. But whatever he's going to ask for, I'm not. I would be very skeptical to, to give him that. Obviously, in, in the negotiating process, but I don't think he's worth it. Um, I was thinking the other day that um, that if the what the Rangers really needed in that situation in Game Seven. In Game Six, they needed it. They needed it throughout the entire playoffs. What they really needed in Game Seven specifically was I'm not saying they needed Cliff Lee, but they needed a Cliff Lee type guy, a guy who's been around, who's been there. Maybe no, they needed Cliff Lee, ball, and they needed to have somebody there to say, "Hey guys, cool down, cool off, chill out. We got this. We just need to go out there and play our game." I think. I think me saying that comes from what I saw and how the how this team reacted. Just on just the sheer fact that we had that we got Cliff Lee last year, we started playing better. As all of a sudden we knew that you know we maybe we can have an off game because we got this guy. And not necessarily that took took off games, but it gave him a little bit more confidence. It's like, hey, you know, blow it off. We'll come out there. We'll get him tomorrow. We we know we'll get him tomorrow. It was just so, like when the when the Brewers picked up Sabathia. Yeah, and, and and they made that playoff run, and, and and they came out of nowhere to win the wild card, and it was all due to him. I mean, that guy was just a machine for them. So yeah, I, I can see the same thing happening down by you guys there with uh, Cliff Lee last year. I think it definitely was a spike, and it and it helped you guys out a lot. Mike Maddox is a great man. He does he has done wonders with that pitching staff, and Nolan there. But I think they needed a a guy in in the rotation, in the bullpen, in the dugout. That actually was going out there and putting numbers up to sit there and say, "Look, guys, you know, give them a little backbone." You know, they needed that, and they didn't have that. And if for anything, just that one game, Game Seven, to give them a little bit more confidence, even if you didn't pitch, even just having a presence there, a fatherly figure, so to speak, I think that would have helped. And they didn't have that. And you know what? If you're going to pay CJ that money, he's not going to be there. He's just not. So I don't think he's worth it in that respect because he's not an ace. He, your ace does not. No. Your ace in, in game in, the, in game seven in the World Series, he doesn't go out there and the first pitch he throws beans a guy to walk on um, the bases loaded to, to score another run. Your ace does not do that. I'm sorry, he doesn't. Well, and, your ace uh, also doesn't go 0 and 4 in the playoffs. Yeah, your ace. Every also, game that you run him out there, you lose. That's that's not an ace. That's maybe a second or third. You know, starter. That's not your your go to guy. And you know, you know what? I think you can agree with me. And you know what they say? Well, he had a great regular season. You know what? We had five, four other guys in that starting rotation that had great regular seasons. We had we had, we didn't have. At one point, we were the first team to have all their starters over ten wins. Right. So, I mean, ten wins, all your rotation, and, and the, that was what July. I'll take that. Hell yeah. So. I don't know. You just can't pay him like a number one. He's going to be asking, or you can't pay him like an ace. He's going to ask and be paid like an ace. And uh, I don't know. I think it'd be a mistake if they did. I think they'd be hamstringing themselves a little bit. And I think that they better do it on a four-year deal at max because uh, he's going to. If he has another season of postseason collapse, I'm not sure where his value is going to be. What about back to Game Six, really quick? Um, I heard you pre pre show tell me that um, Nelson Cruz is the new Buckner. What's uh, what's? I mean, I know what happened, and I know you know what happened. I just want to hear. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. What do you here's say the thing. What, what do you say about that? You. you, you here's you what you say. You got to make that catch. I. You can tell that he got scared. He, he he knew that the wall was coming. It looked to me, and I think everybody else, that that was the case. And he just kind of held up a little bit and, uh, and kind of just laid out to try to make this miraculous catch. If it goes in the glove, it does. And if it doesn't, which it didn't, you know. And, and, and my thing is, you, you got to do whatever it takes. I mean, that's, that catch right there wins you your first World Series in team history. Yeah. Bottom line, has to be made. No, it was. It was two outs, the, it was two strikes. 
that play right there cost him. And he had room. He didn't hit the wall until a foot or two, you know, uh, a step or two after the ball went by him before he hit the wall. He could have made that catch. You break your arm. You break your collarbone. You knock you yourself really out. Everything. That is the right. last play of the season if you make Because you catch. make that catch, and that goes down easily. Easily. Easily is one of the greatest plays, catches in World Series history. Period. You got to, like, run. You put your head through that damn outfield wall. Yeah, exactly. Period. There's no excuses. You've got to come through in that. And uh, yep. I'm not saying, oh, well, who knows? Time it's will tell. Bad. Now, I think partly after uh, reading about the the – um, the documentary, the Bill Buckner documentary that they did, I think it was real sports, but um, I think partly because, I think Boston partly vilif- helped vilify uh, Buckner, and maybe the fact that it was also a more of a routine play at first base. This yeah, if this wasn't too routine, it would have been a heck of a catch. But... It would have been a hell of a catch, it really would. It would have been a great catch. Um, but I don't think that the fans here in Texas are going to vilify him. I don't think we feel entitled. But that being said, I think Nelly Cruz is going to be thinking about that for a long, long time. I agree. I agree. All right. Well, well heck of a season. Hey, really great season. Uh, yeah. You guys really made great. it for a second year in a row. And, yeah, that and was you know damn what? watchable right up to the end. Yeah. Oh. Game six was one of the greatest baseball games I've ever seen, period, I, I've never, ever seen. And there were a lot of great, greatest things being thrown around by commentators all around, you know. Yeah, I mean, being you have to. I mean, it was a I solid was, series. It just I sucks. Was, it was unbelievable. Just somebody it, somebody screwed up the it ending. Sucks, it sucks yeah. being the Bills. I don't know who approved that script, but. Uh. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, yeah, I think right. Mark Levy got in uh, Ron Washington's ear and was like, hey, you should do it like this. Oh, oh my God! And Ron Washington managing the NL—I don't know. I hate NL ball so much. I hate seeing pitchers go out there, bunts galore. They look so—they uh, look like somebody. Not if you're a baseball purist. They look like me writing with my left hand. It looks so <laughs> backwards. Not like, if you're a baseball like, purist and you they love just all that. Like that. And put their shoes on the wrong feet. You know. See, and that's why to me, Game Six was was nothing like that. Errors, galore, uh, home runs, extra they, base hits. They were, I mean, it was just phenomenal. It was just an unbelievable game, in my opinion, and I think a lot of other people like Rich just said agree. And yep. it's, so. it's a tough one. It's a tough one, but, uh, you know, time will heal it, hopefully, and uh, hopefully it won't be as vilified as Buckner Buckner's play, but... I mean, really, there was a bunch of other things that you said could have led to it. What do you two um, think about prospects for next year for the old Rangers? Uh, I think we got we have a lot in the pipe. Rangers have had uh, one of the better farm systems in the league. Actually, um, I'm not sure what the exact numbers, but I think the past three years, two of them they've had the number one farm teams coming up. So we got people in the in the pipe, so to speak. We got guys uh, coming up, uh, some outfielders. Uh, I tell you what, though, we definitely need to find something at first base because Mitch Moreland can't be playing first if he's not going to produce like he has been, like at the end of last year's World Series or last year's playoff run. Right. And he did nothing this, this playoff run. But he's such a no, good I... first baseman. But he's such a liability at the plate. You had to play Michael Young there. Uh, but does that prove that Mike, that was um, – that was For his bat, unfortunately. Michael Young's a great DH, but I don't know about uh, playing first anymore. It might not even be uh, past him. But, no, with, with regards to next year, Nolan Ryan, you know, okay. heading that thing up. Ron Washington, I think you guys got the right manager. Um, you know, and, and you guys have one of the best offenses in the league. You know, the pitching will, you know, it, it is what it is. It was it shown itself in the playoffs that it wasn't maybe as strong um, as people thought. But the offense is definitely there. And, um, you know, your core is coming back. Um, you know, with Velvet Elvis playing short, and uh, you know, I had to drop that, oh, yeah. and uh, kind of like that. Velvet Elvis playing short, Ian Kinsler, one of the best uh, duos in the game. Well, let me stop. Uh, Napoli is a rising star. He's a perennial all-star year in and year out. That kid, if the Rangers would have pulled this out, would have been your MVP. 
uh, I think you guys got got it got something good going there for a, for a long time. Let me say this real quick, and we'll close on this. Where what where, what changes do you make on this team? I mean, I we got most of the guys coming back. We're gonna give people money. We need who need money. Although Josh, this next coming year is his last year. I'm sure he'll get re-upped. But where are you making changes on this? Starting team? pitching. Well, besides starting pitching, you're the well. That's where you do, always, that's where you start. I mean, if, if you don't think Wilson's your answer, then you don't even try to pursue him. You let him go, uh, you know, and then you have money to throw elsewhere. I mean, uh, Kobe Lewis had a great postseason. I don't know how stout he is uh, during the regular season. He had a pretty oh, good year this year. Up. He's already been picked up for his third-year option. So, but, uh, so you, you, you got him, um, you know, and then you got CJ. I don't know. I think st- uh, starting pitching might be where you guys look to start first because – yeah, well, the I mean, obviously, great and the bullpen's good too. Obviously, pitching is going to be the most important thing. Bullpen is something that's very important, and it's you guys got a great closer pitch. too. Yeah, oh, Nefty, he's awesome. And uh, although there's talk about moving into the starting rotation, which they did at the beginning of this year, I don't think right. that's the end. But I think you keep Nefty as a closer. But as far as like your position players, there's you got Beltre. He just got here this year. You're not getting rid of him. You're not what a year he him. had. You're not getting rid of uh, Velvet Elvis. Uh, no. First base is a question. You got Mitch there, but then yeah, you, you guys can drop the their first baseman. Yeah, then you got Nelly Cruz in, in left, Josh in center, or, or Nelly Cruz in right, Josh in center, and David Murphy in right. I think the biggest question over there may be David Murphy, but he's not really a weak link. So I don't know no. where you, what you do with these position players. You don't. I mean, you're afraid to sit there and do nothing. But I really don't think that you can do too much with this outside of first base and maybe left. Let me ask you this. Do you guys have enough money to go after a pool holes or a fielder at first? I think that uh, with this giant TV contract we just signed uh, last year, or when Nolan Ryan took over the team, that it's bringing like $80 million bucks in a year. Now, a lot, a lot of stuff gets in the wash, but... I mean, I'm not sure how much of that goes into the bottom line where you can use, but that is a big player in this. Uh, I right. That, I think they could. I think every report I've read has the Rangers in the in the uh, in the lottery for or in the sweepstakes for for uh, Pujols and Fielder, and I don't think that's a bad idea. That's kind of a it's kind of a fantasy football move, but hell, if you can get one of those guys. Wow. And, and you address your pitching uh, issues. I think oh. that I think I'm feeling very solid with that. And on the oh, yeah. Beltran thing, he got his he got his third Gold Glove yesterday, and then today yeah. he gets his second silver bat. I saw that. Yeah. Saw, excuse me. Hey, a great year. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, you know, because Beltran after he left LA, um, you didn't hear too much from him, and, and you know he was putting up decent numbers, but not as as good as he was. In the beginning of his career, and then this year, I thought, just where did where did Adrian Beltre come from? Because he totally resurrected, had a great year. I think he found a, a system that he likes. Uh, he likes playing under uh, Ron Washington. He likes playing with guys like Hamilton and Cruz because um, you got protection in that lineup. And uh, and I think he just felt real comfortable just go out there and get some pitches that he liked and uh, and and took swings at him and I think he hit over 300 home runs this year or excuse me 330 home runs this year <laughs> um, and uh, <laughs> yeah maybe for his career I don't know I don't have his numbers in front of me but um, you know he had a great year and uh, and and you know Beltre definitely is one of the stories on that team yeah yeah I mean and we locked him up and gave him big money uh, whenever we didn't get Cliff Lee, that's who we went after. That's who we gave our big money in the offseason. And I tell you what, it could have been more well spent. Uh, all let's, right, uh, let's switch gears here, shall we? Yeah, I wanted to talk about something that I saw the other day. And I don't know, you too, Rich. I want you to chime in on this. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the head piercing that's not on the ear as far as females are concerned. I saw this girl the other day, um, <laughs> and I'd seen her around school before, and, you know. Rich, is your mind wandering like mine is right now? Well, he said head piercing, right? Head oh, oh. Piercing. You'll get, you'll get okay. there. Not <laughs> okay, that, go ahead. I had I to take pause, but I was like, about. all right, that narrows it down. <laughs> we can work with that. This is PG. 
So, okay, so she goes to the printer, I'm sitting down, and I, I see something on the back of her neck. Like, I'm not joking you. Right here. She has a piercing. And it's one of those little things that chicks put in their lip or in their nose. But it's right here. What in the world? You think someone pranked her? Is that thing there? <laughs> it's like the jackass so where they run up behind you and shave your head. Yeah, someone she ran just up and like pierced her. It in there. Yeah. Ha ha! Like, bam! She passed out at a party and she woke up with a. Yep. Car Instead of a magic marker all over her face or sharpie, it was uh, piercing. So anywhere, anywhere but the ear is not cool with you. Nose, eyebrow, lip, uh, you anything. Know, I've seen you know, some girls that the nose ring look can you know they can pull it off. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm a, a, an advocate of it, but I can see where some girls, you know, they they can pull off a nose piercing and still look cute. Yeah. Um, Rich, I think you agree? Uh, I can get behind like an eyebrow piercing, maybe. Okay. Oh, that's, Lip that's and the tongue. That crap, stuff Rich. just kind of gets in the way, and eh, I don't know if I really appreciate the nose ring or nose okay. piercing, not ring, obviously. To me, it seems like they're trying too hard. Just seems dangerous. Seems unsafe and unsanitary to me. And, and that's what they want you to believe. <laughs> oh yeah, that it's look at me. I can pour a cubic Z in my nose. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come date me. Let's take a walk on the wild side. Yeah, let me introduce you to my parents. Maybe I can just hang my keys from my nose so I'll never get what they are. Yeah, if you're a chick and you want to do something to jazz it up a little bit. Go uh, to the gym. Go to the gym. <laughs> yeah, she, I was going to say, uh, get, a, get a streak of weird colored hair. Yeah, yeah. a little pink and blue. Yeah. That's kind of that's kind of weird, and it's... Or actually, my wife started doing this thing now. It's, I, guess, I guess the kids are doing this nowadays, but uh, like getting... Like feathers weaved into the hair. Man, this is this is feathers a broad, weaved into the hair. Yeah, this is a broad cool. scope thing. Yeah, the, um, that's cool. They, they, yeah, we're really running with this now. Forget piercings. Yeah, forget we're sports. Going. Yeah, like hair, I see what you're talking about, Rich. But I don't know. It, to me, it seems too much American Indian, and I don't know. It seems weird. How do they get it in there? Do they staple it to the hair? That's what we did. Just hot glue gun again when she wasn't looking. Just, yeah, no, she, it's uh, yeah. just like a little crimp on kind of bead thing i think well ryan i think you know what to do next episode just i want to see a little bit of something something there i'll be honest with you i've seen those chicks that have like the blonde hair and the black under in the back it's kind of trashy i think i might kind of like i I might kind of like it i don't know it's not something that i'm in the kind of trash you know it's like hey that'd be cool if Uh, now i can get rid of it well rich i'll do us a favor and uh change gears here to yeah uh, moving on to uh, no, the NFL. <laughs> hey, hey, we gave you your, you know, your two, three minutes to rant. It's been right the fashion points. minute here on the Lone Star. Now back to sports. <laughs> Dude, We're going to yeah. switch gears. Yeah, do it. What, what do you say? No. Yes. Okay. Mark, so anyway, yes. um, <laughs> we had, uh, we're going to start off with the uh, hometown team there, the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, that uh, was not the, the uh, follow-up that you wanted from the Rangers losing the World Series, was to be on national TV and get uh, throttled by the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. It was a pretty <laughs> shitty sports weekend, dude. It was. Yep. It was bad. You get embarrassed. Yeah, was, you know what? I'll tell you the truth, dude. I didn't watch it. I, 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 I watched it, but I was, not, I was not paying attention to it as, as much. When they got down, when Marty B doesn't catch that thinking ball... And Oswald picks that damn thing off. I was like, I'm done. I can't pay attention to this crap. I'm over. Oh, I'm, I'm so over Martellus Bennett. Dropping more balls than puberty. Yeah, he's done. God, I can't stand that guy. And he had a chance to trade him for a first rounder to, uh, to Cincinnati like two years ago. And we didn't do that because we totally needed this guy. Um, yeah, I don't know. The the run game wasn't there. More injuries. Mike Jenkins is going to be out, so Skandrick's coming in. Sean, Sean Lee. Lee. Doctor, he's probably talking about season-ending surgery. They're getting second opinions, but some doctors say it's season-ending. And he's, so he's, he's an up-and-coming beast for you guys. He's Anchor huge. that linebacking core. You have to have 80-year-old Keith Brooking come in there, along with Brady James, who looks lost sometimes, and... Ah, uh, just there's not a whole hell of a lot positive. No. Talk about. 
There's no Dez. No, there isn't. Dez. Where's Miles Austin, man? And then he was throwing a ton to Jason Witten, and that's fun. But you know well, what? That's usual. There's something else besides Jason Witten. He's a, he's a he's a rock, but you can't win a game throwing to Jason Witten all game right. long. Your defense, God has got to get some stops. Do you guys Deshaun follow Jackson the Texans at all? The Texans, uh, on and off. What do you got? Uh, I'd have nothing, but we technically launched in Houston. So if we wanted to switch uh, allegiance to a team that doesn't have disaster written all over it. Do you see that look on that man's face right there? I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> not my show, Rich. <laughs> not now, not never. Hey, not now, and- not no. Rich, I don't know if you can. I don't know how it works. If we can throw something up from the internet or or, or what live for people to look at, but I saw a tattoo today of somebody who had tattooed Super Bowl champions this year, Houston Texans, and we're in week eight. Kind of like the Jason Terry thing. Kind of like the Jason Terry thing, but that panned out. And uh, yeah, here let's see if Rich can't bring it up. Um, cool tattoo, but a little premature, don't you think, Ryan? Uh, that's uh, that's a hell of a thing. <laughs> I mean, they're five and three. They, they're 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 okay, but save the money and throw throw it in Vegas to say that they're going to win. It'll be more productive, and you won't have a stupid tattoo. <laughs> Dude, the <laughs> Texans? Are you crazy? The Texans? They're uh, without Andre Johnson. They don't stand a shot. Um, and Arian Foster is good, but I mean, no, he's great. Shab, I mean, he's he's good. I think he can. He got a little overrated there for a minute. He's serviceable. Um, no, he's serviceable. I mean, he's he's in the uh, middle of the row, middle of the upper. I think, I think he's just above a bus driver. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Oh, there it is. There it was. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Look at that thing. Yeah, that that's really that's happening. And that, uh, that's his arm, right? I think so. <laughs> but I mean, wow! You know, like uh, talk about confidence, Oof. dude. Oh, look at that thing! That's silly. It's it looks infected. Is that an is that an infection there, or what, what oh, we got on, going on? On fire, or maybe they've. Oh, well, that's what it is. They've they've written over this a few times. This is this oh. is a new tattoo. They've been doing this since maybe their inception. This is <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not. Uh, it hasn't that's been somebody there who was a little indecisive and he's he's just a overzealous. Houston, he's just a Houston Texans fan. He's low bred anyway. That's just the way his skin is. So okay, Cowboys were atrocious, and the Eagles at three and four. I'm not putting them in the Super Bowl, but um, they look like they're starting to put it together. Um, moving on to Pittsburgh and New England. Okay. Um, I thought that was a great game, and it, it, it has been for the past couple of years. And um, it's usually found to uh, have Steelers on the losing end. Um, but, you know, this year they played, wow, one of the better defensive uh, games that I've seen you know, this year against any team, uh, holding to New England to around 250 yards total offense. And well, uh, with Tom Brady averaging 360 yards by himself this year, that was pretty pretty astounding. I think that the New England machine is starting to slow down from the beginning of the year. If you remember, he was having those crazy games with Welker. I think it's slowing down a little bit. You saw what they did against the Cowboys. The Cowboys were even able to shut them down a little bit. Yeah. Um, I don't think they're as great or as bad as that, but they're definitely – starting to come down no i i'm always for some reason i just can't get on board with the pittsburgh steelers being an offensive juggernaut of any sort they're such a defensive team usually they're such a clock managing team because they run the ball a lot especially up there in the cold winter months Um, but it's changed it's changed with this core receivers that they got and ben roethlisberger ever since he's come in he's kind of changed the culture up there yeah, but I still think Ross, Roethlisberger is just—he's not—he's not just a guy. The guy will spare you to death, but he'll make a play when he needs to. But the other time, oh come on, dude, he—he is not a. I will don't make me pull numbers out for next week, and I'll show you some numbers that will show you that, like like two years ago, wasn't even two years ago, he had more interceptions than touchdowns. 
No, I understand. You're telling but me what... if Tony Romo did that, he is not getting his shit pushed in? Well, I, I, I just think that Ben Roethlisberger, you know, you could argue that he's a top 10 quarterback in this league. Yeah. And he, top 10 quarterbacks. They should because he's won two Super Bowls. That's just. But not only that, I mean, I understand that he's had some horrendous games, but he has, he's had some great ones too. And he yes. definitely managed the game against New England this past Sunday. And uh, they came out on, on a winning end. And it was at home. I mean, it wasn't, um, you know, it wasn't like a, an, an unbelievable win or anything like that. It was against, you know, two very good teams going against each other. But it's a classic it matchup. It's a classic yes. rivalry. Oh, no, absolutely. What their, what their, uh, what their uh, records are. Is always good. Uh, you want to touch on the Cards Ravens? I thought this game was particularly interesting because it was Bolden going back to Arizona. Well, it was Bolden playing against Arizona, but Arizona going to Baltimore. Oh yeah, or that. But uh, <laughs> but Bolden, yeah, he had a great game, um, and, and especially the second half. I mean, the first half, the whole team was kind of you know, it was, I think it was twenty four six at half. Um, and they came out really fast, uh, scored a, a, an early touchdown, and uh, and never looked back from there. Cardinals had three points the whole second half. Um, their offense was non-existent, and that Ravens defense started to show up. And uh, and Blackwood of Bolden, all of a sudden, uh, I'm not going to say Montana Rice here just yet, but uh, they had a heck of a second half. And uh, that, yeah, that secondary is suspect to begin with, but but they Boy, they, they did. Geez. What's that? Montana, slow your roll cheese with the uh, Montana rice, dude. Uh, Flacco, he has. He has <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I'm not anointing him just yet, but they had a great, great second half. Well, I think what's what's happened to Kevin Cobb, dude? He has not been the guy that Arizona was thinking they were getting. <laughs> well, he has nothing around him. I mean, his offensive line is abysmal. I mean, it's 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 awful. It's it's maybe one of the worst, if not the worst, offensive line in football. And right. and I'm not trying to throw this guy a bone here. I'm just saying, it it, it is what it is. I mean, the, the the running game has been obsolete. Beanie Wells is in and out. He's always hurt. Ryan Williams, their second round draft pick uh, from this past uh, draft, he's gone for the year. I think with a torn ACL. Um, you know, it's just, I mean, they got Fitz, and they signed him to a long-term deal. And what you got to keep in mind, too, is that this is Fitz's guy. I mean, Fitzgerald re-signed here because Arizona ponied up the money and the draft picks and DRC to go after Kevin Cobb, and that made Fitzgerald happy. So you got Fitzgerald. You have no number two. Andre Roberts, are you kidding me? Yeah, uh, well, you know, they, they went out and got deep. Yeah, Preston went to Kansas City. Todd Heap is here, but he's been hurt. Um, and, you know, Baltimore, maybe they knew what they were doing when they released him. Maybe he was a liability, and then they just didn't want to deal with it. Um, you know, that Dixon that they have over there now, he looks like a pretty good uh, tight end that they can work around. Um, you know, so, yeah, I, I don't know if it's all on Kevin Cobb. Um, it's definitely not comfortable for him, the way that that line's protecting him, or their lack thereof, I should say, and him running around like a fool trying, to, uh, trying not to uh, get pinned into the dirt. So, oh my I don't know. I, I say we give it next year, but it doesn't look any better. They got way too many holes to fill. And Baltimore is, uh, you know, is, is a good team. So, I think it was a mirage what happened there the first half. Um, you know, Peterson ran one back, and then there was an, a, an untimely interception fumble that kind of put Arizona in, in scoring position inside the 20. But other than that, they didn't really do anything all, all day. So, But what a comeback, and what a, a horrible collapse by the Arizona Cardinals. Yep. You can't spell collapse without Cardinals. Oh, Ooh. moving on. Saints-Rams. What What? What happened? Uh, I mean... Dude, what a great freaking week for St. Louis. <laughs> yeah, Dude, I don't no know kidding. what to think That was about. supposed to be our week. Yeah, I know, damn it. Um, I don't know what to think about the Saints. It's not so much the Rams, because you know what the Rams are. You right? Am it was right? their backup quarterback that beat them. Bradford was hurt. It was their backup quarterback, and it was A.J. Feely. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what to make of that. I'm a little boggled by that whole thing. And it's not like New Orleans is, is out of their element. They play in a dome as well. I mean, you know, you would think. A.J. Feely doesn't know what it's like to be standing upright. He's on the bench so much. And then he comes <laughs> in. 
The guy comes in and charge and leads the charge to beat the Saints. That high powered offense. I don't well, know. it was their defense. Breeze did throw two picks, and we finally had a Steven Jackson sighting of old. So I think that definitely yeah. bolstered uh, the Rams there. Every year, I don't know about you, Mark, dude, every year I'm waiting for him to just stop being able to do it. Just like, <laughs> just hit the wall and start Marion barbering it. Yeah. Guy, yeah, no kidding. The guy's a tank. The guy is, even though his injury problems and, you know, all the pounding Spot that he, he takes because they run him into the ground because they yeah. haven't had anything there besides him, he's yeah. still holding up. But I don't know. This next game, this next year, or this next year and this next game could be – you know, where it all starts to go down. But I don't know. you got to keep your faith in that guy. And to think the, the, the Cowboys could have had him instead of Julius Jones. You, you, you yeah. tell me which one worked out. Yeah. Well, I think we both know which one worked out for the better. But uh, staying with the division, speaking of the Cowboys, the big goose egg for the Washington Redskins traveling up to the Buffalo Oh, my God. Bills. This Ralph was Wilson. freaking pathetic. Loving it. They're loving it up there. That team, I'll tell you what, I didn't see the Bills coming at all this year, nor Ryan Fitzpatrick. The Redskins, I mean, is this is, the surprise was 3-1. and one. Now reality at 3-4 and four is set in, and we're going, okay, this is what we expected. I mean, <laughs> how, John how, Beck, give me a break. No, how about Rex Grossman Give me a break? The guy... Oh my oh, God! Yeah. I think everybody should learn their lesson when he when, in the Super Bowl when Indy beat Chicago. Like, <laughs> dude, the guy is so or the guy's so. They didn't bad. have much to choose from. You didn't, dude. The guy is. I don't know what what Shanahan. He's a smart guy, right? I mean, he's done things. He's just skins on the wall. No pun intended. But you can't start training camp saying Rex Grossman is our number one. You are high. If you're going to do that, and you know what, they're paying the price for it because that guy sucks. Those twenty-three to nothing is definitely paying the price. God, when you're an oh. NFL franchise and you can't even put three points up on the board, there is a big problem. That is bad. And let's let's give the Bills some credit. That defense has been playing spectacular. Not to mention Fitzpatrick. Uh, yeah, they, they re re upped him early. Fred Jackson. Um, Fred- Freddie J, man. I- Remember when I had Freddie J in my fantasy a couple years ago and you made fun of me? Well, I didn't. Ha- I shouldn't have had him then, but damn, if I was playing now, I'd have him. And he would. Uh, uh, I will tell you what. In both my pay leagues, I have that guy. Oh, look at that! Uh huh. Work. Oh What's ridiculed? God. It looks like now I knew what I was talking about, huh? He is murdering, and I got him in like the eighth or ninth round. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah that was a great year. If they had one. I mean, one. I mean, I know that they they have a, a decent number one there, but um, if they had just just one stud stud wide receiver, um, somebody oh, that could uh, run routes perfectly, I think that Fitzpatrick's good enough where they could be really dangerous Johnson's coming up not there. Bad, dude. He ain't just no, no, no. He he's serviceable at at the least. I mean, he's a, he's a good wide receiver, but somebody you know of a, of, a, of a upper echelon caliber type receiver that that team could really be dangerous. DBJ and Freddie J, dude. Um, quietly, the Bengals are five and two. Quietly, very quietly. You know what? They're making everybody's making this noise about their their counterpart that we're fixing to talk about, the Niners, because they're six and one. If the Bengals are six and one, they they would be on the precipice of exploding up in uh, up in Cincinnati. Oh, our boy here. Well, they get lost in that division because you have Baltimore and you have Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean, you know, but to be honest, five and two, they're right. They're right in the thick of things for uh, for the division title right now. And Andy Dalton, our, our TCU homeboy here, has uh, has there you got go. giving some love. Oh yeah, just just rub on that love, local love. Um, <laughs> dude, he's gotten them playing out of their mind. Uh, it just goes to show you, and I wish I could be completely one hundred percent right. But I, th- I, th- I thought Dalton would be a better quarterback than Cam Newton. Cam Newton's having a great rookie year. He slowed down a little bit, but I still I still would do it over again. I'd take Dalton before I'd take Cam Newton. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I would. Whoa. I'm sorry. Dalton has is going to be built to last, and Cam Newton is, is it's like Michael Vick in Atlanta if Michael Vick could actually throw a ball. But 
I think he plays too reckless, and he's going to find that one that one play where he's just out of position a little bit. He's contorted in a, in a way he doesn't want to be because he's so athletic, and he's going to take a hit, and he's not going to be right after that. And well, I think I, you could say that for a lot of guys, but I couldn't disagree with you more on Cam Newton. I think he's I think he's way better than advertised at this point. Well, I, um, I, I take Dalton over over Cam Newton every any day. Well, and, so consider me, consider me, you know, if we were having a race between the two, consider me second place. But I'd still do it just because I don't. Well, I'm already biased to Cam Newton. I think he's a liar and a cheater. I think he's a piece of crap. Because oh, see, I, I've always rooted for him. I really like him a lot. He's been doubly bad because he thinks the rest of America is stupid, thinking that he didn't know. Whenever his dad's buying him all this shit where the money was coming from, whenever his dad even came, it even came out that his dad literally said, "We need one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to play at your school because that's what this school's giving us." So unless well, you're going to give us that, don't even talk to us. And to him, well, say, like, "Oh, I didn't know." That right. is complete horseshit. <laughs> well, let's let's let. That's old news. He's now in the NFL. I understand what you're saying, and I can appreciate it, but. I, who knows what what really is the truth there and and this? You know, it's you know, old news. Reggie Bush at USC, but we all know that caught up. We'll see. Very good point. We'll see. But also to get back on the Cincinnati Bengals, they do also have one of the better defenses in the league, and I think their defense has kept them in a lot of games. It hasn't put a lot of pressure on Dalton, and uh, through that, you know, he's been able to uh, to uh, thrive a little bit there, especially with AJ Green. And Gresham, the tight end there, he's got some weapons around him. So, um, yeah, but surprisingly, five and two. Um, then, uh, the Niners, man. The Niners, yeah. hardball. One of the best stories of the year, in my opinion, in the NFL. Yeah. You know, this guy comes in, goes, gets hired at Stanford, turns the turns that whole uh, program around. The culture, um, you know, of course, he did have somebody by the name of Andrew Luck to lean on for a few of those wins, but. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he did what he did. He turned them from a, from a, a loser into a perennial power this year. They could possibly be playing for a national championship. And then he goes to the NFL, and yeah. he's one of the hottest commodities coming out. Uh, Miami was, uh, was after him. They couldn't, they couldn't um, seal the deal. He decides to uh, ultimately stay home close to Palo Alto, where, uh, where his family's based, um, right outside there, San Francisco. And, boy, I'll tell you what, with essentially the same team that Singletary had last year, how can you not give the credit to Harbaugh? I mean, he, I think he, he's got him at 6-1. and one. I think that's the, the perfect example of coaches and coaching makes a lot of difference in this league. Right. And when you get the right guys in there doing the right things, it works. It pays off in spades. Now, Singletary got good. He got a good first initial push out of that group, but then he lost the message. He lost the players. And mm-hmm. then they started going back to the old Niners. But I think with a, with a guy like Harbaugh, a guy that actually can back up his his big tough talk, and yeah. I maybe you know, maybe that scuffle with Jim with uh, Schwartzy up in uh, up in Detroit, maybe that gave him a little bit of gusto. But um, you know, I, for can, as much as I like the guy, that? I didn't quite agree with that. But you know, it is what it is. Um, well, maybe, I think that I think that Schwartz is a maybe little, Schwartz is right. Maybe he's just got to learn how to do the uh, the po- you know the post game handshake, and maybe he'll work on that. <laughs> maybe he didn't he didn't quite get that uh, celebrating up and down with your hands in his face and then pushing to the side wasn't. Uh, wasn't uh, very no, no. In my opinion, I put that on Schwartz because if you watch a Schwartz demeanor during his games, because I've watched actually watched. Like a, probably like three Lions games this year, dude. He's always talking trash to the players on on the field, the opposite the opposition players. You know, he's in every whenever they win, like he, you get this big like like slow motion shot of him going. Yeah, you get if you can read lips like like Ryan right now, you would know exactly what he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, he's got that shit. It just seems like. His, his his pot's a little too hot for him to, for anybody to put a little ice in it, and then he loses. He's a little sore ass and goes up there, and then he wants to go and <laughs> run after him. Like, dude, you, it was you entertaining at best. You better be able to take a bunch of shit because you're you're acting entertaining like entertaining at best because that yeah that wasn't very good, but it was funny, right? It was it was funny. It was interesting, and you know what, Harbaugh. <laughs> He just kind of played it off, and he's like, look, I don't know, I think Harbaugh 
had the upper hand in that. And you know what? It's 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 bad to talk about Detroit because I, a certain part of me thinks they deserve that little braggadocio. They, they deserve that that machismo. But dude, really, you lost the game. You didn't win one for almost two seasons. Doesn't mean you freaking own the world here, Napoleon. Like, yeah, that's a good point. You don't need to be a sore a sore loser. You got to learn how to lose. Uh, good, which I'm sure you do because you're in Detroit. But I don't see what <laughs> what the big deal is. But no, Harbaugh. One other. Oh, I just want to throw out something really quick because I think it's a good point. Um, I was looking at the 49ers' schedule, and they're six and one, and have only played one divisional opponent. So, and that division is horrible. Good so, point. Uh, is this team going to be 13 and three, 12 and four? I mean, what what's the deal here? We're halfway through the season. And uh, and they've only you know and they have their division left Seattle, Arizona, and St. Louis. Wow, yeah, that could be a first round buy in the future of uh, the San Francisco car, uh, San Francisco Forty um, Nine ers. Excuse me. That's the thing that uh, I was I always used to bag on the car, uh, the, uh, the Cardinals when they went to the uh, Super Bowl because they had they went there with nine wins, yeah. six of them for their division. Now. That's a, that's a really bad division, but I don't think... Has been. Yeah, I don't think a, a team should be favored to win the Super Bowl, getting there with nine wins, six of them in their division. I don't care how hot they got, and I was I was cheering against the Cardinals because they didn't deserve to be there. They really didn't. Oh, they did, they did because they play hard, but I didn't think they were as good as, you know, at, at some point the clock's going to strike 12, and it did. They showed who they were, and it was a close Super Bowl, but I don't think they, I didn't think they deserved to be there. Cardinals and, got hot at the right time. They did, but you know what? They still they still were in the worst division in football. So no, no, no I'm saying for the playoff run, for the playoff no, no, run, they, they got they, hot they, at the right time. They did. They they. It happened to the St. Louis Cardinals this year, and it happened to the Green Bay Packers last year. True that. So Jim Harbaugh comes in, and let's say his daughter's 300 pounds. Do you think he could give you a pep talk into dating her? <laughs> um. No. Come on, Mark. You can do it. It's not as bad as it looks. To date your 300-pound you know, daughter, sir, I'm going to need a lot more than a pep talk. She'll sweat it out. Don't worry about it. She'll sweat it out while she's eating. <laughs> she's got a great personality. I'm sure she does, Coach. Just I'm roll sure up the does. flower to find it. <laughs> I'm scared. Like, what, What's going to happen at the end of the date is... Am I gonna like go for a hug and she's gonna like push me out of the way and like start running around or what? Yes, and she's gonna like headbutt you before. Yeah. Hey, good day. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but we'll see. What about uh, Tony Romo? Are they calling for his head yet? <laughs> Everybody's calling for Romo's head, but no. It's too bad. It's a good quarterback. I don't know. But but he's a good quarterback, but. Even you can tell here locally, even um, even his supporters are, are starting to they're not giving up on him, but they're starting to he's starting to to wane from the. Uh, I know this is crazy to say, but I mean these are the the best examples. But he's starting to wane from Troy and Roger area uh, area, and he's starting to go over more over towards um, Quincy anyway. Carter. Well, not Quincy Carter, Danny White. You know, a great oh, oh, we're not going that bad. You know, a great quarterback, but he never won anything. So he might be getting categorized there more than uh, more than the latter or the former. So I don't know, man. I mean, you just got to see, and hopefully they get the right people in there. Which I'm starting to question if Garrett's going to work out. I'm not sure he has the ability to. To maintain the the morale and get everybody prepared and worked up, maybe he's overloaded and he needs an actual offensive coordinator because he's doing co- offensive coordinating and head coaching. So that's a that's a lot. I think you need two people to do that, and it might be too much. Jerry's influence might be coming into play a little bit more here. I've got an idea. Hey Jerry, maybe you should hire a general manager to run your franchise. That could be a start. That is the oldest argument in Dallas Fort Worth, dude. You're not gonna get that to happen. It's don't even. You, don't you, even you've taken a, a a businessman, and 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 don't be wrong. He's he's there. He's in the everyday operations. He, he knows the Cowboys at this point. 
but he's still, you know, you've taken a businessman and tried to make him into a football mind, and, and he's just not there. No, and, he's not. Uh, and and it's, you'd, have it's a better, you'd have a better chance of getting my ex to stop complaining about her weight than to fucking get Jerry Jones to <laughs> yeah. not be the GM. It's just not happening, dude. No. Man. I agree. Man, man, man. All right. Well, well, well see you later. Do you think we wasted enough of everybody's time today to uh, call it a show or what? I, I think we have, Mark. I think we've done a good job of it, too. What do you guys want to talk Riff. about next week? Let's talk about sports or Sports and things. Let's yeah. let's talk about uh, let's talk about neck tattoos, Ooh. and and where they fit. I saw this chicken work the other day. Next week, right? Next talk week. Talk about it right now. Oh, <laughs> leave him wanting more, baby. Rich, we got to keep this guy on track. That's all it is. Otherwise, you know, he's got a wealth of information. He's just got oh, no yeah. one to use just it. Run off the rails like crazy. I'm a trash can of useless information, and I'll go any which way direction you want me to. Whoa, that sounded horrible. <laughs> Next week, um, I think we're going to get back to uh, now that baseball's over with and we can put that to bed. Um, we'll get back to the NFL. We might touch in on some college. Uh, LSU against Alabama this weekend. Big game. Yeah, huge game. And um, the possibility of the NBA actually having a season. Um, that could be interesting, too. We'll see what, what develops uh, from now until then. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, my BCS computer is calling me. Hold on. Then maybe we can actually have a celebration for those Dallas Mavericks and, uh, and their fans down there and, uh, and, and, uh, and, oh, wait, and see a celebration. In the car. This supposed to be a wallet joke. Rich, Rich do you, do, what's going on? I have no idea what he's doing. Me neither. But as long as he does, that's all that matters. His computer is a wallet because that's what determines the matchups. Oh, oh gotcha. Sorry. Come I get on, it man. now. No, it was good. It was my it was my fault. I'm sorry. Sports joke. <laughs> See that's so, funny because uh it's so, corrupt ass system and Okay. Right well uh, I think that's gonna good good wrap up for us uh, on the half ass sportscast. Uh, it was a great show. I had a good I had a good time with you, Mark. I had a good time with you too. Thanks again for having me on. Hell yeah, dog. Well, uh, I guess we'll do it again next week unless Rich wants to uh, roll with uh, exercise videos for fat chicks. Hmm. <laughs> or girls getting uh, neck piercings or, or whatever it is. Maybe you can yeah. find some footage on that. With jewelry in the back <laughs> of the head. Got to go with what sells. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. See you next week. Thanks for watching.